Today is March the 10th, 2024. We're moving right along. Welcome everyone to the Imani Temple of Temecula Church of God in Christ, Power for Living Sunday School class. And today, I am your teacher for today, Elder Madison Farrar. And our subject today is testing our faith. We're continuing on with that. Our Bible scriptures today, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. Uh, 13 and uh, we'll be at verses uh, starting at 5 and going up to 11 on today and our key text today is going to be found in 2 Corinthians 13 uh, 5 just the first part of 5 5 a where it says examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves uh, and so uh, we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you on this morning for this beautiful day that you have blessed us to see, another day, uh, journey that you have granted us to have, Lord. We just give you all the glory and the honor and the praise on today, for you alone are worthy, O oh God. And so we come to you this morning asking you to bless each and every one that is in class, those that are on their way, those that are listening in on today or will listen in later on. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless each and every household. We pray, God, that you would save, deliver, and set the captive free on today. We pray, oh God, if anyone doesn't know you and the pardon of their sins, that they would want to come to know you, God, who you are and what you can do for them, Lord. And so we just thank you and praise you, ask you to remember those that are sick and afflicted among us, that you would touch their hearts and their minds, God, and that you would sin your healing virtue, Lord. And so we pray that you would bless the lesson on today, speak to our hearts and our minds on today. We pray that you teach Holy Spirit us what you want us to know and learn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All righty, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, welcome if you're just joining us uh, to our Imani Powerful Living Sunday School uh, uh, lesson on today. We're going to be talking about testing our faith, testing our faith. We are yet in uh, Unit 1 talking about faithful versus faithless. And uh, we're examining our faith in these lessons, just examining our faith and examining um, our uh, faith. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But I wanted to point out our devotional reading on today, our Psalms coming from Psalms 139. Uh, 13 through 18 and verses 23 to 24 uh, and it has some good stuff so later on I won't have time to read it but if you would jot it down and read it at your your leisure again it's Psalms 139 uh, starting at 13 uh, verse 13 up to 18 and then jumping to 23 to 24 and so David who is the author speaks on God knowing us even before we were born how we were fearfully and wonderfully made. So again, please read when you have a chance. And the last part of that speaks of God searching and trying or testing us and then asking him to lead us in the everlasting way. So again, today we're going to go ahead, and that was a devotional again, but today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. And uh, we're just jumping down to uh, verse 5. But Paul is our author on today, and he's writing to the people at Corinth, 
the Corinthians, and this letter is challenging them. So in the prior verses, which is not in our lesson on today, some were questioning uh, and challenging him, his, and even protesting about regarding his authority as a representative of Christ. In other words, um, questioning whether did God really send him. And so um, Paul had visited them twice already. Prior to this, he founded the church, he wrote them letters regarding all the divisions and the issues that were going on in the church. And now at this time, he was letting them know ahead of his next missionary journey to them in a loving way. He challenged them as a good leader would be to examine themselves. Did they accept his doctrinal teaching um, regarding the nature of the Christian faith? And... Um, or did they not do it? Because when he was going to come for the next missionary journey and we're getting our lesson, he wasn't going to spare or speak nicely to them. So those who had sinned earlier. So in other words, when Paul was saying that the next time I come, I'm trying to be nice about it, but the next time I come, um, he wasn't going to put up with that foolishness. In other words, he was going to straighten them out or use a harsher tone uh, to them to reprimand them or criticize them with disapproval and so that's one of the jobs of leadership to be able to have to uh, correct people as needed and so again we're going to go talk about today testing our faith and testing has to do with examining or uh, you're going to we're going to talk about self-evaluation on today and our faith today is not the usual what we talk about that uh, trust or relying on God, but today's faith is talking about our practicing it, our belief in it, and our practicing it. So again, we're going to be talking about examining our actual belief and practicing the actual Word of God. And the purpose, some of the purpose is to gain insight. When we, when we examine ourselves, we're gathering, gaining insight of ourselves. So we can see our strengths, we can see our weaknesses. So we're going to be looking inward on today to see if we are a true follower of Christ. All right, so we're going to go ahead and read the lesson. So again, 2 Corinthians 13, uh, we're starting at um, verse 5. Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Verse 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. Verse 10, Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord had given me to edification and not to destruction. Last verse, verse 11, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. So again, we're talking about testing or examining our faith. faith, And um, just as we take, um, or you've taken that time, natural tests, we need to take a spiritual test to, again, to see where our strengths and our weaknesses are. And therefore, um, um, these benefits, uh, not only ourselves when we know our strength and our weaknesses, but it also benefits the body of Christ. And so um, we are, as Paul said, is to examine ourselves. And our benefit, also another benefit is knowing our strength and our weaknesses is so that we can correct ourselves as need be. Any of our flaws and, and our weaknesses uh, we can correct. Could you think of any other benefit of examining yourself? Anyone? 
Um, to, to know to know what your weaknesses are, um, to identify you know, areas where you know you shouldn't go or things you shouldn't be dealing with, but we may fall um, to that. Okay, so just knowing our weaknesses so that we won't fall to that, uh, so that we don't get trapped, so the enemy doesn't trap us. Uh, trap us <laughs> and one of our weaknesses. Anyone else? So to make sure that you are not, you know, feeling some way or looking in some way against others. You know, you, you know, your job is to keep yourself in line with God and nobody else. <laughs> Absolutely. So another benefit is concentrated on your own self so if I'm so busy concentrated on my own self of course I'm not examining you because I'm concentrating on my own self and so Matthew 7 and 5 says Jesus was saying thou hypocrites first cast out the beam out or the log or the plank something that's big for yourself in your own eyes and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat which is a speck a little something smaller out of thy brother's uh, eye so think about it so if Jesus stopped by our church or your church those of you who are looking and he took inventory individually and collectively what was his, what would his report say about you and what was his what would his report say about your church? What would the strengths be? The weaknesses. Yes. I don't think that Jesus would certainly want to know if we're loving our neighbors as ourselves. That's a big one. And uh, it doesn't always happen. Okay, so she said as if we were loving our neighbors as we're supposed to. Are we showing that love? Okay. So, I mean, you don't wear, yes, uh, Elder uh, Yes, uh, sometimes what I do is um, I look at um, Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 with the seven churches. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I see that Jesus walks in the midst, midst of the church. He sees everything. And you have condemnation and you have um, recommendations for them. And I tell them, a lot of times I apply that to myself. And I have to look at myself to make sure I'm going to be an overcomer in that area. Regardless of what it is, you know, like when I'm doing drugs, I have to look and say, okay, I, I can't do that. You know, I, don't, I, I can't worry about what John Doe is doing over there, but I need to catch my, keep, keep myself from environments and things like that. So it's different things I like to compare, like you're saying, when you look at others and we go, you know, I, I'm not too good. I, know I can't have a drink. That, that's not... So that's what I do uh, by doing that. Okay, let me just re, uh, reiterate, repeat what he said for those who didn't hear. Uh, he said in Revelations, if you look in Revelations where uh, Jesus was talking about the seven churches and he was there and observing it and he had recommendations for it. Uh, just as hopefully I'm sure he would have, of course, recommendations for your church, my church. And so um, then the elder said that then he it basically he examines his own self, you know, and we that's what we are to do, examine our own self and compare ourselves to the word of God. And he was saying he's not comparing himself to someone else because some people think everything is OK that they're doing. And so that's their standard. That's their truth or whatever. But we stand. Um, the word of God is ours. Uh, what we live our lives by and what we measure ourselves by is the word of God. And so that's what he was saying. Examine, as the lesson is saying, examine your own self. All right. Yes. I, you, I would say that are we lifting him up? Are we glorifying him? Are we honoring him? Uh, are we coming to the house of the Lord? Are those things, is, is he seeing that being done? Mm. Okay. So she was saying if you didn't hear, um, if Jesus was to be, uh, to come physically here and give a report of our church, he would want to know, are we honoring him as we should be honoring him in his house? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I would also would like to add that, are we being transparent? Mm. Uh, 
um, with what we're dealing with, or are we just putting up a facade as to be super saints? And we, we need to, and when, the reason for that transparency is to show or be an example of the prayer that's going forth, the power of prayer that we're going through, but through the power of prayer, the word of God, through our faith, God is giving us a victory over those things and, uh, and, and, and not pretend like we're not dealing with them. Okay. So are we being transparent? You know, are we being uh, for real? You know, um, when, um, because we could, you know, you could pretend, you could pretend. Like people come to church all the time and they go on home and they feel that they didn't, they done their duty for the week. They yeah. came to church or whatever like that. So if Jesus is examining us, and of course, which he is, um, then he would see all of our flaws. He would know if we're genuine, if we're true. And most people know if you're genuine, if you're true, if you're putting up a facade. If they stay around you long enough, right, you know, right, the way people act. And so, again, that's something to think about um, this week. Give you a little homework. <laughs> something to think about this week. If Jesus was to examine you, you know, what would he find? You know, what do you think he would say about you or your church? And then the point is to always, when we have our weaknesses and our floors, is always to do what? Correct it, right? right? To correct it, to make it right in the eyes of God. And so, as opposed to avoiding it, and that would be putting on the facade, as, as opposed to avoiding it, it's dealing with it. We have to deal with ourselves, just like we look in the mirror. We look in the mirror, then you go, you, you say, oh, okay, or whatever you say, and then you go away and you forget what you see or whatever. So the, the whole point is, is to deal with yourself. So if I examine myself, then nobody else has to really examine me, right? Because we are seeing, and again, measuring ourselves up with the word of God. So Paul's ministry was being tested and verified. They were trying to prove or authenticate through his suffering rather than avoiding it. And um, God's power was manifested through his life. So again, we'll have people that will, you know, observe us, may judge you, may you know remember your past may bring it up and all of that like they're doing with that but your life that you're living now you know and the power that he had so paul gave some imperatives or instructions so a command to take some action and the challenge again was to self-examination to check your own self and again stop questioning his credibility so that's not our job to question the leadership of the church's ability, right? So if you decide you're going to stay under it, you decide, okay, as long as they're following the word of God, you're not to check, you know, to um, challenge their authority. Like that. And so um, that's what they were doing again. So, of course, we could always look and, and blame someone else. It's so-and-so. It, this person made me do it or say it or whatever. But no, it's yourself. Check your own your own self. And so they should have known Paul already, his genuineness. He, again, he started the church. He wrote to them. He was looking to them. They should have known his credibility, whether he was true or real. So, if, of course, if it's a false teaching, then they should have left. And if you're under false teaching, then you should leave as well. But once you know that the man of God or the woman of God, someone is preaching and teaching what the Bible says and you decide to stay, then, um, then you aren't to really uh, confront them like they would do in Paul. So they were wondering, again, whether he's in the faith and... Um, the faith, again, here that we're talking about is not the not so much as relying and trusting in God, but do you actually believe the word of God, the doctrine of God, and are you living it? Again, and that's where you examine yourself. Are you living what you're talking about, right? So, um, and then 5B, he went on to say the testing, um, and that's our... Uh, um, uh, key text on today, the testing, both self-imposed and imposed sometimes by others is necessary. Why is that necessary sometimes for other people to see something in you that needs to be corrected? 
What do you think on that? Is that okay? Yes, Elder Belton. Yeah, well, you know, I think it's very important myself because if you claim that you're uh, a Christian mm -hmm. and that you're following Christ, do you believe what the Bible says? So when I'm talking to people and from other religions or something, I always do that to them. I say, if you say you're a Christian, then why aren't you doing what the Bible says? You say you use the Bible. You say you believe, so why come you don't believe the whole thing? Why you believe in your organization? You, you're taking the organization of words over the written word of God. So that's what I examine myself. I always say the Bible says. I use that quite often. The Bible says, and it has nothing to do with my feelings. It has nothing to do with what I think it ought to be. Because your thoughts and things changes every day. Today you feel good, you feel a little roar, you know, but tomorrow you may feel weak and shameful. And so it already changed again. And so I, I like to tell young ministers that, stay with the Bible said. My pastor always told us, what do the Bible say? And that's the better frame, I think, to, to govern yourself by what the words say. Okay, good. Let's see what we can say on that one. Oh. All right, so what he's saying. <laughs> Yes, he thinks it's important that um, not only you examine yourself, but sometimes our brothers or our sisters see something in us that they need to, you know, give you a check on it, right? And so he was just saying that sometimes you don't see sometimes what other people see as well. And, uh, and if, you, if you believe in the Bible, then you are living by the word of God. And that's what Paul is saying today. If you're saying that you believe and you trust and you have faith in God, then live it. Live it according to what the Bible says. You know, don't uh, just uh, say you believe and go on about your business. It has to be a transformation according to the word of God, right? So let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, right? And so if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And so you have to be made over again. So we have to check ourselves uh, periodically. And if someone lovingly, a brother or a sister, sees something, that needs to, you know, you uh, season you, that, that brings it up to you. If you said you're a Christian and you live in opposite of what the word of God says and someone says something to you, he said, you really shouldn't say anything. But just check they're yourself. Your they're looking at you, they're reading the, the word through you. They're doing it. Yes. So if you're not up to par and living according to what the word says, then you're saying, well, there's nothing to that. Because that person who's claiming to be all that in Christ are just doing the opposite. So why do I need to do thus and so? Okay. So just you saying that we are, um, people are reading us basically. Right? And so if you say that you belong to Christ and you're living for Christ and you're doing something that's in opposition to the word of God, then there's a problem, okay? And it needs to be corrected. Yes, okay, then we'll go to you. Yes, yeah, so I would also like to add to that about examining yourself. It is a process. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't stop once. You examine yourself once and that's it. No, it's a process. Amen, amen. It's a continual thing, she said. Examining ourselves is not a one-shot deal. I'm good to go. I, exa I examined myself 10 years ago, people. I'm good to go. <laughs> So it, it, said, it said it's a process. It's an ongoing process where we need to examine ourselves and, then, and daily. If someone said daily, you need to take it. That's why Jesus said in the churches, you have to be an overcomer. So that means constantly fixing it. Fixing it. So like you said, what you did 10 years ago, you said, I'm cool. But now you're just back like, whoa, what a mess. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a um, thing. Uh, Elder um, uh, Ford said. Yeah, uh, she has to say it's just a daily uh, spiritual introspection that we need to be doing. And how we see what some of us uh, tell a lot about the Christian walk. So again, this is it's a daily thing. We have to examine ourselves daily, um, and then check yourself on you know when someone points something out to you, how do you receive that information as well. El Solomon. I think it better to our witness to bring this time for us to witness to someone else or testify to someone else. We we share those feelings. We know what they're feeling like. We know the 
correct approach to take, uh, wisdom to use when approaching them, whether it's for correction or, or uh, even reproofing something. You know, you have that in mind or how to deal with it. Amen. So it's kind of good to know in advance um, situations so you can know how to deal with people. Um, how to come at them, how to, you know, whether you're coming with correction or encouragement or, you know, tell them what a wonderful job you did. We thank God for you being in the ministry. You know, so it, it's, you know, you got to be careful how we deal with people and not come in our own self as we go and come let be, be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Someone had a elder. No, I heard it said that the only Jesus in people will ever see is the Jesus that's in you. So if you claim it, like you said, examine yourself that you should have some Jesus in you. Yeah. you know, because they're, they're watching us and watching you. We don't think they are they are so. Yeah. You say you're a Christian, they don't find they don't be watching you and ask you at all. Soon as you slip. <laughs> but I say well, it's very powerful to see the real Jesus it may see. Some people might not ever come to church, but your your walk might draw them to the church. Amen. Amen. So he was saying that um, that we're the only sometimes we're the only people that we're the only Jesus that people will see. The Jesus in us. Uh, people are reading us on a daily basis, whether they're your colleagues, family members, and all of that. You're not fooling nobody. You know they could tell. And so uh, because we say we are representative of Christ, then we need to be actually representative of Christ. Because our job is to help draw, build up the kingdom of God. Not tear it down. Amen. Okay. Yes, sir. It's like a personal accountability. There mm -hmm. should be some daily fruit that you're producing. Mm -hmm. Daily. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people know you by the fruit you bear. Mm -hmm. and, and the scripture said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. That you know, that means that hey, you know, you examine you examine yourself. You know, and you know, you should be able to, you know, your, your fruit, fruit should be able to prove, okay, that you're in the faith. And Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 7 and 8, it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, his own elect, which cry day and night unto them, through the, uh, though they bear long with them, though, I'm sorry, though, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. When he looks inside the mighty temple, he wants to see faith. Is there any faith in the building? Is, is everybody still believing <clears throat> that I am God and that I am who I say I am? All right, you missed that. I'm sorry, you're not here. You didn't catch all that. But anyway, I'll try to do the best I can. <laughs> So fruit bearers, we are fruit bearers, and um, you know he gave us a nice scripture in Luke to go to. But when Christ comes, will he find such faith? And he's looking for as 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 he said for us to be faithful. Will he? When Jesus sees you, are you going to be faithful? You know, if he came and examined our church, would he find the faithfulness in the church? And that's important. And so, okay, we're going to move right along. So again, Paul was. Um, um, those who found, found fault with Paul actually revealed fault in themselves. So spiritual blindness, not seeing your own faults, therefore you can't address them, and uh, so then someone needs to point them out. But he was confident, Paul was confident. Again, we're, and if you joined us late, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses 5 through 11, talking about testing our faith. And um, so Paul was confident that his proposal for self-examination would lead them to realize that the presence of God, he had the presence of God in his life. And so Paul prayed in verses um, 7 through uh, 10, already read that. So if you have time, you look back, which we probably don't. But Paul prayed to God and he called God to strengthen the reader against evil. And we know that evil is all around us, and he just was concerned. And if we're not careful, we're studying in the woman's Bible study. I'm going to put a plug in for that. Uh, the whole armor of God. And the importance on putting on the whole armor of God and not leaving anything, uh, any piece of the armor off, because then the enemy will sneak in. 
You know, so he doesn't care how he gets in. We know he studies us and whatever like that. And so, um, as my pastor said, we need to lock arms, you know. And so the enemy can't come in. Be aware of what's going on. Sensing, see, sensing the presence of the enemy in the room when he steps in. But anyway, so he was asking God, could he strengthen the readers? Because let's face it. The enemy will come to me, he'll come to you, he'll come to everyone. He'll have a thought, you, he'll put a thought in your head in a second. Oh, look at her, she thinks she's that, or he thinks he's all of that. They ain't even thinking that, but the enemy, you know, will, if you're not careful. So he was praying and asking God. His concern was that the Corinthians show the fruit, as our elder was talking about earlier, the fruit, the transformation. So once we come in Christ, there needs to eventually be a transformation. People need to see a change happening and occurring in your life. So again, and be less concerned with someone else's business. So first you got, we have what, 24 hours to mind our business and 24 hours to leave your business alone. <laughs> I don't remember how exactly that goes, but that, I think that's the gist of it. Buy my own business. <laughs> All righty. So Paul talked about, go ahead, someone. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I was, this, I have an underline in my Bible, uh, this 10th uh, chapter also, because Paul brings a point out when we, okay, oh, yeah, these people are complaining about me. But he said, I'm a Hebrew. <laughs> like they are. I'm up with Israel. He went on down the line. I've been beaten. You know where I've been, in other words. I've been in shipwrecks. What they done? They just sitting on the sideline complaining about me. So that'd be like, I would be complaining. Oh, I could, I could be better than uh, Pastor Mason here. Well, you guys don't know nothing about me other than I'm on the sideline. He's been here. He's been working and building and building and working for God. And so Paul brings that out. And so, when you, of course, when you get to chapter 12, then he just lays it on the line. You need to examine yourself before you start, you know, making all these accusations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. So, then, so, yeah, so he, he brings to them also, just to reiterate what he says about how he, he's gone through. He suffered, you know, and he was beaten, shipwrecked, and all of that. He's, he's done that, and he's been working with them again. For, for years. He founded the church, for goodness sakes. He wrote letters. He's keeping up with them as a good leader, praying for them and all of that. And um, so it's like, you know, how dare you in a sense. But again, he's doing it real nicely in the letter. But remember, if, when he comes to them, if they didn't get the point, then he'll use harsher words. Yes, sir. Yeah, just real quick, just a word of knowledge. I don't think we really, it's so thin what you just said earlier. You said that the enemy doesn't care how he gets in. That's so profound because I mean, he doesn't because he's going to use whoever and whoever in whatever situation he can to be destructive. We have to be mindful of that. He's saying we have to be mindful of the enemy's tactics because he will use any and everyone and anything to distract us from doing the will of God. Okay? From being standing in there. But the truth, he talked about the truth. In verse 8, the truth will prevail. The truth will always win. So he, Paul had not failed regarding the validity of his message and authority. Though some of the Corinthians thought so. Then he went on in verse 9. For we are glad. So Paul was glad. He was joyful. Uh, because weakness... If he's weak, that's fine. He was happy in that. Because why? He was concerned more so about them being strengthened in the faith. Okay, so good leaders always pray for their for their constituents for lack of word right the second, but they uh, you know, he wants they want us to succeed Amen. and to grow. And so if they're growing and they're succeeding in the ministry, then he's glad about it. So he suffered or whatever, but if they are becoming strong, then that's all he wanted for. So suffered hardship, as we said, persecution, the gospel, so their faith would be strengthened. Then he talked about perfection, okay, um, in verse 9. And so perfection, the church unity he was talking about. So it was kind of, again, if the enemy gets in 
it's, he's coming to destroy and divide people. So he, he wanted um, wishing for the perfection, for church unity, for the church to move from one state of being to a better state of being. And so all leaders want their, you know, their church members to go from one state, grow in other words, you know, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not to be stagnant, but to always be moving forward. And that's the message this year that the Lord is saying, move forward, keep moving, right? Not get up, don't be stagnant. And um, so perfection also has to do with being equipped. And that's what we talk about the full love of God, being equipped to go ahead and move forward to do what God is saying and grow in the faith. And so then in verse 10, Paul's purpose was to reprove, to criticize gently, and again, just to help them to improve, to move from the space that they were in, the thoughts that they were thinking. So once you know the truth, this is what you're supposed to do, change your mindset, right? Change your mindset. If the word of God says he hates lying and you a liar, well, you and you for lying, then you need to change your mindset. And so he, he, again, he reproved them, but criticized gently. And rebuke has to be criticizing, but a little more harshly. So what, again, his purpose was to correct the wrong behavior and action, but to build up, to edify. And that has to do with building up to maturity and, of course, not tearing down. So lastly, um, he goes on to say, finally, brothers, farewell has to do with rejoicing. Okay. Perfect, be perfect, he told them, to be move forward towards per perfection or maturity, to grow, constantly grow in the Lord. You shouldn't be in the same, if you were with the Lord 10 years, you shouldn't be in the same relationship that you were with him 10 years ago. It should have increased, it should have grown if you spend time. If you spend time with people, your relationship grows or you nip it, right? <laughs> so with God, it should increase. And then he told him to be of good comfort. Be content. Okay? Be content or satisfied. Be of one mind. Again, the church unity. Live in peace and harmony. Okay? Even though um, there's some division there, you have to get to the place where you can solve problems where you could solve problems, solve it, deal with it, and move forward again. So um, the insurance, and then, and then the God of peace, God, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. In other words, when they implement, when they carried out the things that he was asking them to do, the five imperatives, okay, in the first half, then God's presence and his peace would be with them, along with Paul's commitment. So today, what he's doing, the conclusion, Paul is asking us to examine ourselves. Do we really know ourselves? And it requires, one, to examine yourself, a desire to be mature. You have to want to be mature. You have to want to grow, right, in grace. You want, have to keep striving for perfection because we'll never re reach perfection, right? So we just go on, right? And then... We have to encourage people, be encouraged ourselves so we can encourage somebody else and be committed to live out the gospel, to practice peace. And if they did that, the Corinthians did what Paul was asking them, that would flourish the church. Of course, of course the church would grow. And we ourselves, that same thing would happen with us if we examine ourselves, see where we are in relationship to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Are we actually following it? Are we actually living it as opposed to just lip service? And if we lock arms and keep the unity, watch for when the enemy is coming in and get to praying, you know, and keep the unity in the church and allow the church to grow, then we would be examining our faith as we should and doing what the word of God wants us to do. Amen. All right, so testing ourselves, the last thing, testing yourself or examining yourself is not optional. It's something, as you said earlier, that we should do all the time. 
Amen. All right. Last thing. Has my faith, and you don't have to answer this, but I want you to think about this. this it's a rhetorical question. Has my faith, one, changed my way of thinking? Has my faith changed my attitude over time? Has it changed your language? Has it changed your priorities? And has it changed the way you love and treat other people? If not, if your answer is no, then it's time to go deeper in the Lord. Amen. All righty. So that's our lesson on today. We thank God for uh, the word of the Lord on today. And next Sunday, let's see what we have on next Sunday. Next Sunday is March 17th, Defending Our Faith. Oh, that should be good. Defending Our Faith. All righty. So whoever's teaching that, tune in next week and learn how to defend the faith. All right, and uh, they'll be coming from 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, 8 to 17. But of course, you know, I'm going to ask you to read the whole chapter. It won't hurt you because uh, you have time. And it's, again, it's 1 Peter chapter 3, and it'll be 8 through 17. So that's on next week. So as we close, we wouldn't close there without asking if you do not know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. It's as simple as ABC. A, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross, was buried, rose again in three days like he said. God the Father raised him from the dead. And C, confess what the Bible says, that you are a sinner and Jesus is the Lord. And he is the Christ. He's the only Savior who could forgive us and bring us in right relationship with the Father. So we pray that, um, that you would, if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior, would get to know him as soon as possible because um, time, by the way, time is winding up. And so uh, it may not be winding up for, for me, but it may be winding up for you because we all have an appointed time until death. So we advise you to get your um, life insurance for eternity, okay? And you have to get it on this side of the life. So we're going to go ahead and pray out. Father, we just thank you on this morning for all of your goodness and your mercy and kindness unto us. We pray, oh God, that you would bless everyone that's in attendance, those listening in, those that are on the media, and those that will listen in later on. Whatever your saints need, your people of God need, we just pray that you would give it to them. And thank you that you do supply and will supply our every need, as your word says, according to your richness and glory. So we thank you for that. We ask you to remember those that are sick and afflicted. Remember those, oh God, who had a desire to be here on today but could not. And we just pray, oh God, that those that don't know you, that you would move upon their hearts and their mind and that you would give them a mind to want to know you in a more excellent way. So Father, help us to examine our faith. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. All right, there's a praise in the temple. Let's enter in. Before we go, we have a birthday. Woohoo, we have a birthday. Our own sister Tiffany, and she's right here. So happy birthday. Woohoo. God bless. <laughs>